Welcome! In this video, Tom, W3TDH, talks about antenna grounding and lightning protection. So hi Tom, so now that field day is over, what are we doing? We're going to disassemble the grounding array. This panel is the entry panel for all cables that enter the operating area. It's a common sheet of aluminum, and every entry device that enters the operating area goes through this panel. Mm -hmm. So the panel itself is bonded down to this first rod, and then that bond, you can see that connector there, mm -hmm. is connected to the grounding array. And the grounding array consists of those rods in a V-shaped pattern out there with the copper wire laying right on the surface of the earth. Each rod is twice its own length apart mm -hmm. from the previous rod. Mm -hmm. And when we install the clamps, whether they're acorn clamps or these Harger 305s here, right. we shine up the rod or burnish it with a piece of emery cloth because while the rod's in storage, it develops a coating of copper oxide that doesn't conduct real well. And then we apply the bronze clamp. So how do you burnish it? With a piece of emery tape. You put the emery tape around it, work it back and forth. And because it's uh, an abrasive tape, it burnishes off the copper oxide so it will conduct real well. The clamps themselves are bronze, so they do not tarnish in storage. And as long as you put them on to direct, directly onto freshly burnished copper, there's a very good contact there. So you do that each time you set the rod, you burnish it to set the clamps on it. And so every one of these rods has that clamp on it? It either has these 305s or in at the end of the line where it's not going to go on to another rod, we'll use an acorn clamp. Let me take a look at that. The, so this is the end rod, rod, right? And you can see that the clamp there is vaguely shaped like an acorn, if you can picture that, and it's commonly called that in the tra trains. Uh -huh. Okay. But one thing lightning will never do for you, no matter how much you want it to, and that's it won't make a hard turn. So if you were to shape this wire along these rods with these acorn clamps uh -huh. up and down and everything in order to make the connection, lightning won't take that turn. It would then side flash and go wherever else it could find a ground. You don't want that. So you use the clamps that allow the wire to pass directly by the rod in a straight line each rod draining off some of the charge till it's all dissipated. Okay. So, so every cable from an outdoor antenna that enters the operating area is protected by that panel and by a lightning arrestor that's manufactured by the same people who manufacture them for broadcasting, commercial radio, public safety radio, and the company's very well known, but I don't have permission to use their their name in the film, so I'm not going to mention them. Now you have these other kinds of uh uh, now that other set of wires laying on the ground there yes. is a surface wire grounding array at, and that was the final issue rather than my copy that I've made here. Right. This is a final issue item from the Natick Soldier Center in Massachusetts. They went down to Florida with a team from MIT and uh -huh. Caltech. I wonder uh -huh. if they got along. Uh -huh. And uh, they did extensive testing of this and found it works better than the nine foot driven rod that used to be issued for mobile equipment to be grounded. Oh wow. They use this to circle the entire piece of equipment, dr drive these less than one foot rods at intervals along the wire. And it also comes with a set of jumper wires to ground that circle back to the vehicle at the corners. So that when you're done, it's completely encircled. And we use these for grounding the base of our towers so that we can have the same effective grounding system with a relatively low level of effort and with a re le relatively low level of disturbing the local environment and tearing things up too because it's a shallow hole, it's easily plugged and smoothed over and we don't leave any markings behind it. So you protect all the assets above ground, the, uh, the V-shaped, uh, um, system here that protects our pavilion right. during use, uh, the Damascus pavilion, which they kindly let us use, and then these uh, go around every one of our towers. They go around any one of our towers that's metal. Uh -huh. We have that metal tower. We also have an aluminum tower that is now down and packed away. Right. Uh, and then we also put one around Ron's trailer, and it may not have been taken up yet. But all the way around that vehicle where people were operating, we put a surface wire grounding array so that we could have confidence that everything entering that trailer was grounded. 
Great. So this way it protects the whole operation, especially the people. Right. And the buildings, because we want right. to leave things as well as we found them, if yes. not better. But on this side of the road, we're very fortunate that the presence of that cell tower creates a protected zone um, that basically covers the entire pavilion. So our additional grounding is basically precautionary because in, in standard lightning practice as published by the National Fire Protective Association, this pavilion is fully protected by the height of that cell tower. Oh, wow. Okay. So walk me through this. Lightning strikes. How does it work? Lightning is going to equalize the charges between a cloud mass and the earth. And the first streamer that occurs is invisible to the human eye and it's ground up. What follows is a streamer over that same ionized path that is cloud down to equalize the charge. And that's why when people are outside or engaged in outdoor activity, even if they haven't heard thunder, if you get that prickly feeling all over your scalp, your hair stands on end, or anything like that, you need to get under cover very quickly because you're in extreme danger. That's the earth building up a charge that is going to equalize to something, and you don't want to be in the equalization path. The reason thunder occurs is that the lightning expands the air faster than the speed of sound because of the heat it produces. So it's essentially a sonic boom on a very large scale. And you don't want to be anywhere near that much heat and that much electrical current if you can possibly hit. So what happens to the, to the electrical current with your grounding system? Instead of hitting the building or instead... It dissipates out into the earth and equalizes over the large area covered by the grounding array relatively harmlessly. Now, it is possible that the grounding array would be damaged. Part of it might even be destroyed. But by comparison with what else is at risk, right. that's a cakewalk. That's easy to sacrifice and replace. Right. That's the whole point of grounding systems, that the grounding systems should be sacrificial as opposed to equipment and especially the human beings working the equipment. Great. Well, we're lucky to have your services and in, in helping us stay safe and, and, and safeguard these fabulous facilities. So thank you, Tom, W3TDH, for all that you do for our club and for the community. You're welcome. Thank Glad you. Glad to do it. Thank you.